Hello everyone, Father Scott Vanderveer here with another installment of Stewardship Reflection. I wanted to talk with you today about this concept that all of us need to decide if we are, by the end of our life, going to be able to tabulate that we were a net giver or a net taker from the world. It feels like that might be too clear a distinction. It's too either or. You know, most of us are giving at times and taking at other times. All of us came into this world as children who were helpless, and so we were taking, 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 and then there comes a point where we become the parents and we're giving, 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 giving. But it does seem fair for us to acknowledge that some people don't understand that part of our goal as human beings is to leave the world better than we found it. To not just leave it exactly as we found it, but to leave it a bit better. For our life to have made a positive difference in the world. So how interesting for us to consider that, that we are called to be net givers in life, not net takers. And the way that we are net givers is if every time we cut down a tree so that we can turn that tree into paper, as we do here at our mills in Glens Falls, or turn it into wood, as many of our lumber industry folks do in the Adirondacks or people who have wood burning stoves, or we put the wood into the stove and turn it into heat. If we're going to be cutting down trees for wood and paper and heat, Instead of just cutting down one, part of our task is always to plant two in place of the one that we cut down. A net giver leaves the world in a better place than he or she found it. So all of us are being given an opportunity to consider that for ourselves and our own giving. All of us have that kind of comfort zone where it feels good to just know that there's places where we're just gonna be taken care of. I feel that way about going to my parents' house. I'm blessed to have parents that are still healthy and in their own home in their late 70s. And so when I go there, it feels good to have a sense that dad's gonna get the guest room ready for me and mom's gonna cook something that I love to eat and I'm gonna get taken care of. It's nice to have a place where that's true. But it's very important for me not to go around the world expecting others to take care of me. And you know, there's a lot of priests who the caricature of priests of years past has sometimes been people who always get the seat of honor or are always receiving, you know, the royal treatment from people and maybe not always giving in return what they could. So I'm very aware that part of my goal as a priest, as a citizen of the community that I'm living in, as a neighbor, is to be a net giver, not a net taker. I would love for the people who are going to consider my time among them or my life at the end of my time with them as being something that was as much a blessing or more a blessing than it was a cost. That's something that I really was focused on as I was leaving my last parish assignment at St. Patrick's in Ravenna and St. Mary's in Coxsackie. I wanted to have left it with a, a sense that I contributed and that I gave at least as much as I took. But because I am desiring to be a net giver and not a net taker, my deepest goal, my fondest wish, was that I will, would have given more than I took. So I think we, we are given an opportunity to consider that when we think about how we want to be giving our resources to those in need. It would be good for us to consider what kind of a choice we would need to make to be a net giver instead of a net taker. And, and I'm reminded of a story, a wisdom story, that comes from Many cultures, I think, although it's, uh, it's got different versions depending on who tells it to you. But it's one of those stories that is so true, it's not that it ever happened, it's that it happens all the time. The story is that a man was hiking in the wilderness and he came upon a fox 
that was resting in between two rocks in a shady area. And the fox, which looked healthy, he noticed had no legs. So as he approached the fox, its eyes got big and it wanted to dart away, but it couldn't because it had no legs. And the man wound up thinking, how could this legless fox be healthy? How could he be okay? How could he take care of himself? So the hiker decided as an experiment that he would just hide somewhere in a clearing where he could see, but he couldn't be seen. So I guess that's not a clearing. <laughs> I better learn how to tell this story better. I don't know where he went. He went somewhere in the distance where he could see this little fox laying there to see what happened. And sure enough, later that day, the fox was greeted by a lion. The lion brought fresh meat to the fox, placed it before the fox, and the legless fox that couldn't move and couldn't feed itself ate the meat that was presented to it by the lion, and then the lion left. So the man said to himself, I think I've learned a great lesson in life. I think now I understand what, what God is trying to tell me. I don't need to work and, and worry and hustle for what I need. I can just trust that life is like the lion. It will provide for me everything that I need. And so the man stopped having any ambition at all. He stopped trying to get food for himself. He stopped trying to take care of himself. He just decided to just see what would happen if he allowed life to take care of him, to allow God or the universe to be the one taking care of him. And after two weeks, he looked terrible. He was disheveled and he was hungry, he was skinny, he was, he'd had a bad couple of weeks. And all of a sudden, a voice came before him and he heard in his, in his ears, in his heart, who knows how these voices come. The voice said, my son, the lesson here is to be like the lion, not like the fox. We're called to be like the lion, not the fox. We're called to provide for those who are vulnerable, not to name ourselves vulnerable and just receive. That lion was a net giver. The lion, the all-powerful king of the jungle, did not need to take care of a little fox. The lion could have made a snack out of the fox. But a net giver always makes sure that those in need are taken care of. We know that that's how God treats us because God is a net giver. God takes so little. God doesn't demand anything other than, as it says in the book of Micah, to love kindly, to walk justly, and to be tender-hearted. We're meant only to be kind, gentle, humble people. We're not called to be takers, but to be givers. God asks for nothing from us, and God gave us everything. Jesus came to earth and gave us everything, and then some. Freed us from our, our addiction to our own needs. Gave us every gift we could ever want. Treated us like like he was the slave and we were the rulers. And we are called not to just lay back and receive. We are called to imitate him. The secret to life is not to imitate the fox. There will be times that we'll have to be in the fox's role. And it's not always so fun to be in the fox. Let's re fox's role. Let's remember that the fox has no legs. Let's instead imitate the lion. Let us be net givers, not net takers. Let us be willing to use what we need from, from our lives, to be able to accept with gratitude the things that are given to us. It's okay to use a tree, a renewable resource, for paper and for wood and for heat, as long as you plant two every time you take one. 
it is okay for us to get our needs met, to live in the world, but it's, it's not our call to take more than we give. It's our job to leave this world just a little better than we found it. The implications for this are many. If you're like me, your mind is racing through a lot of things right now that, that this applies to. Things that are in the news, things that are in our personal lives, things that are true just about me and my, and my private inner world. But let's make a decision now that we will make the fundamental choice to be net givers and not net takers and let us together leave this world better than we found it. May God bless you all.